What I'll do is I'll launch my probe. There you go. You should be able to see the probes around in space around me, these little things. Um, there will be eight of them. You want eight per eight probes per launcher. I use the sister score, our sister's core scanning probes. They do cost a little bit more, but they do work quite a lot better. So if you can afford them, definitely go for them. Now, double, double left click somewhere off in space that's not going towards anything. Like, I don't want to go over here because I'm going to run into that customs office. So I'll go double clicking right there. I'll move towards it at full speed. Then I'll engage my cloaking device. Once I've engaged my cloaking device, I'm essentially invisible. The, the chances of anybody running into me are almost zero at this point. So, the only other thing that's showing a trace that I was there is my scanner probes are still there. So what you gotta do, um, press the F10 key on your keyboard. It should pull up this. Make sure that your probe scanner display is up. You can get access your probe scanner display um, right by clicking this icon here and probe scanner's right there. As you can also see, the hot key is also Alt-P if you want to pull it up. Make sure that you are in the solar system view like this. If you're not and you get the star map, down at the bottom here, it automatically minimizes it. Why? I have no idea. Left click there. It'll bring up this lovely little menu here, which you can change between star map and solar system map. You want the solar system map for scanning. So back to here, then I'll minimize this to get it out of the way. If you can't find it or it doesn't appear and you're in the star map or whatnot, bottom left here, um, left click that, it should um, unminimize it so you can actually use it. So go with right here. My probes have started off. You can see this lovely little box with the arrows all around it. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is on these icons on this, their probe scanner panel here, make sure it's on probe scanner, not directional scanner because you're not going to find any of the buttons. Um, pinpoint formation. This one right here, left click on it once. That's going to give you the, um, the scanning, uh, the pinpoint formation that you need. The one to the left of it, the spread formation, I have found almost no use for it. Do not use that one. You may also notice that um, as you can see, I have tons of little blocks. Um, you can move the entire thing as a, as a formation unto itself. You can also divide up each of the probes and move them individually if they want to. Um, coincidentally, my push to talk key for my audio is my shift key. And it is also the modifier key to go between moving um, your formation of probes as a whole or dividing them up individually. So anytime I'm talking, you will see the eight probes as individual blocks. Now, if you see, um, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to move, first of all, I'm gonna move the base box that I have there. Don't drag on the box itself. That'll confuse the hell out of you. Do not do that. Find one of the arrows on the side of it and drag it either um, left to right or up to down and do it that way. So I'll show you, I'll center this and watch of where, if you'll see, I'm actually looking down over top of it, not to the side to start off with. So I start off at the top and go like this. Center it there about as best as I can. Then what I'll do is I'll change it my view to the side like this. And where it looks centered over top here, it looked pretty center in there. When you go to the side, you find out eh, it's not as centered as you thought. Um, you're trying to manipulate uh, a three-dimensional field on a 2D plane. It is a pain in the ass, but it does take some getting used to. So I'll readjust this. Now what I'll end up doing is don't, I don't click on any of the arrows or the boxes. What I'll do is I'll just highlight so I have one of the or the bubbles selected on the outside without pressing shift and um, drag it outwards and you'll increase the range like so. You want the range slightly bigger than the target you're trying to scan. I'm going to click on analyze now and then you wait. Note that we're cloaked while doing this. Um, 
your skills do help, and they do help with speed a little bit. Um, scan strength, then pinpointing uh, or scan deviation. The dump stat for scanning is speed. It's more important that you have higher strength and you are more accurate for speed's sake than the actual scanning speed itself. Not that the scanning speed skills or upgrades hurt you any, it's just they're not as important as the probe scan strength. So I've got this down to 7.7% .7 as you can see here. If there are multiple um, signatures, you can left click like this so that it's highlighted. Only the highlighted ones will display on your um, display here. So if there was like three or four of them, all the rest would disappear and only things that applied to that signature. You can also hold down the um, control key as a modifier and click several of them or hold down the shift key and select an entire range. I'll show that in the next uh, system if there's more than one signature here. So now I've found a point. What I'm going to do is I'm going to recenter um, the middle of my block or my probe formation right in the middle of that or as close to it as I possibly can. And then I'm going to lower the size of these blue scanning uh, spheres around um, because the smaller the sphere size the more accurate the results are and the higher the signal strength. To get a signature to be useful you have to get it to 100%. You cannot warp to it, you cannot save it as a bookmark until you get the signal strength to 100%. As you see here, I have to go from the top, the side, and I have to keep on going back and forth from the top and side overviews until both of them are congruent that I'm on top of the target or the object I'm trying to scan. So I got it from the top. Side looks pretty good. Now I'm going to narrow down the, uh, the field here. And I'm going to analyze again. Um, now what ends up happening is the dots and everything that it shows you are the best, uh, the best, I can't say guess, of where the object you're trying to scan is. Once you get it scanned down a little bit, as you can see right here under group, this is a wormhole. Um, for demonstration's sake, I'm going to scan down this wormhole and show you what it's about. So. Um, again, I'm going to do the exact same thing, repeat it, reduce the, reduce the area of the range so I can increase the signal strength until I can get it to 100. Some of the times as you get your skills up and you're able to use better scanning gear, the Tech 2 launchers, the, using like sister core probes, those things help as well as the ship types that you're using. You can kind of skip steps. As you see there, I narrowed it down very quickly. You may need an intermediary scan there because um, there's a deviation on the scanning. So where it shows the dots, those red dots, some of the times you'll have two, some of the times you'll even have just a red circle um, or an it's more like an ellipse of where it's somewhere along that plane and you have to be able to scan within that. If you go too small too quickly, you can miss it and your probes won't be with, um, within the scanning range of it and your scan strength will actually drop to zero. So what I'm going to do here is um, I'm going to warp to the wormhole. If you're warping to the wormholes, especially if you're new with wormholes, I would suggest warping at a distance that is not zero. So let's try 50 kilometers. I'm pressing F10 to go back to the regular view. Now that I'm back in the regular view, I will drop my cloak, recover my active probes. Make sure to do this. There's a timer right here, 57 minutes, 17, 16 seconds, until those probes all die. If I recover the active probes, they'll go back into my cargo hold, as you'll see here. I can right-click and reload them into my um, probe launcher, either the expanded or the core one. I suggest using the core one. Um, you cannot, however, reload this while you're cloaked. And if you do cloak up mid-reload, you'll cloak up just fine. Just once it finishes the reload cycle, it won't have reloaded it. So here, 
on uh, once you uh, scan the wormhole down to 100 or whatever it happens to be you can left click on the signal strength 100 will change into an arrow which will warp to that'll warp you to zero if you right click on the entire um, line here it will give you uh, a, in this case a line too because I'm already on grid with it but you can warp to it at like you know 10 20 50 100 and do something like that so here in the wormhole this is X702 wormhole, right click, go to show info. Um, this line, oh, this line, there we go, leads into unknown parts of space. That means that will go to wormhole space. Um, you do not want to be going through there, especially if you're not familiar with it. You will get yourself killed. When you pop through a wormhole, anything that you're running on the other side, you'll be playing by those rules. A uh, wormhole can go from high sec, which I'm in right now, a 0 0.5 system, to another high sec system on the other side of EVE. It could be 15, 20 jumps away. It could go to low sec, that could be eight jumps away. It could also throw, throw you in null sec 50 jumps on the other side of the map. If you go through wormholes and you use wormholes like that, Always make sure to bookmark the other side where you go through so you can easily find your way back. Wormholes do not last indefinitely. Um, they close over time or over a certain amount of mass going through it. If you're interested in more reading on that, um, just Google um, EVE Online Wormholes. Um, there's tons of information and there's a lot to learn on that. Alright, here in Jack and Erva, um, uh, there is two signatures in here. Now, as opposed to what I was doing before um, with warping to a celestial, dropping my probes and cloaking, I'll show you what I would normally do in my covert ops cloak. This gives you a nice advantage and makes things a little bit easier. So I'll do something like this. I'm double left clicking in space so that it will drop my cloak. I'll throw on my micro warp drive I will cloak and then I will launch my probes immediately afterwards. It'll look something like this. Now I get an entire MWD cycle. I'm going about 3,000 meters a second briefly while cloaked, going off into the void here. And I am leaving my probes about 30k behind me. The sooner I can get those probes off of grid, the better off it is. It'll only go off of grid when I've retargeted um, my probes on F10 and clicked analyze. Then they warp off grid. Until then, they'll just sit there. So here, as you can see, there's two spheres. If I double left click on anything, I will double left click on the box that are centering for all my um, scanning probes right now. You'll notice that my interface realigns. Now, my wheel mouse, when I scroll it up, will scroll out from it, and when I scroll my wheel mouse down, it will zoom in on the center of my probe formation. Well cloaked any of the modules here, um, or I can't use them. What I'll do is I'll launch my probe. There you go, you should be able to see the probes around in space around me, these little things. Um, there will be eight of them. You want eight per eight probes per launcher. I use the sister score, our sister's core scanning probes. They do cost a little bit more, but they do work quite a lot better. So if you can afford them, definitely go for them. Now, double double left click somewhere off in space that's not going towards anything. Like I don't want to go over here because I'm going to run into that customs office. So I'll go double clicking right there. I'll move towards it at full speed. Then I'll engage my cloaking device. Once I've engaged my cloaking device, I'm essentially invisible. The, the chances of anybody running into me are almost zero at this point. So, the only other thing that's showing a trace that I was there is my scanner probes are still there. So what you got to do, um, press the F10 key on your keyboard. It should pull up this. Make sure that your probe scanner display is up. You can get access your probe scanner display. Um, 
right by clicking this icon here and probe scanners right there. As you can also see, the hotkey is also Alt P if you want to pull it up. Make sure that you are in the solar system view like this. If you're not and you get the star map, down at the bottom here, it automatically minimizes it. Why? I have no idea. Left click there. It'll bring up this lovely little menu here, which you can change between star map and solar system map. You want the solar system map for scanning. So back to here, then I'll minimize this to get it out of the way. If you can't find it or it doesn't appear and you're in the star map or whatnot, bottom left here, um, left click that, it should um, unminimize it so you can actually use it. So go with right here. My probes have started off. You can see this lovely little box. I only have relic analyzers on this, so I cannot actually run this data site, but I'm going to scan it down. If I'm going to double click on the data site itself, once you get it down to a single point or one of those little arrows, or site arrows if you want to call it that, um, you can double left click on it. Now, my entire view, no matter how far I scroll in or out, is going to be centered on that site. If as long as it's only at one point, if you have it, if it goes down to two red points, the site's going to be approximately at one of those red points, and you have to isolate it down to a single point. For some odd reason, when you press shift some of the times, as you can see here, it kind of fucking derps out on you. Like I will let go of shift right now. And then I press shift again so you can hear me speak. And it bounces back and forth. I have no idea why it goes on. It's a graphical glitch as far as I'm concerned. And it doesn't seem to be unique just to my client or video card setup. So it seems to happen to everybody. I find by readjusting the sphere uh, or the range on the formation, um, it resets it to the middle of it. So I'm going to scan down this data site now. Align from the top. Now I'm switching to the horizontal view. And I'm off. Looking better. And better still. And now analyze. We sit here and wait for this. Uh, local Greece's shattered life port or life support unit. Now I could warp to this. Usually, when I warp to these, warp drive active. Yikes! 122 AU. That's a long ways away. I'll decloak. I'll recover my active probes because there's no more scanning I need to do in the system. And reload. I like reloading while in warp because you can't get targeted, locked by enemies. Which in high sec isn't that big of a deal. Low sec, null sec, it is a big deal. You don't want to be displayed on D scan or on grid when you don't have to. These are not combat shifts. I do, however, have a cargo scanner. So I could show you, for example, what's inside these boxes here high tech manufacturing. junk and yay crappy data cores I do not like data sites because unless you usually get a rare drop or the high-end sleeper sites they suck anyways that's how it is at this site um, the rest of it is just hacking um, hacking gonna leave to either a separate tutorial or allow you guys to be able to find that on your own I just wanted to get people um, give you some graphical or visual representation of exactly how the scanning interface works. If you have any questions or comments, um, please feel free to email me or drop um, a comment on the channel. I will get back to you as soon as humanly possible, and good luck out there.